Hello and welcome back guys. Okay, so let's finalize our system. We have only a few uh, things to do. So here what we have so far is a complete working system. The only thing that remains is the session class to be created. And once we're done with that, we are good to go. So here I've written down a few methods that we may need to uh, deal with, to create in here. So now you may be asking, uh, why do we need to create a session class anyway? Because uh, we already have a way to deal with session by just saying uh, session start and then um, what else is here? Session start or session, uh, like in the logout, here we can do all this. However, the thing is, uh, we can simplify our system if we use the session class. And because uh, things do change, let's say, for example, uh, some time back, we used to use MySQL, MySQL, like this. That was the extension. Uh, even the commands are still here, like MySQL connect. But these were deprecated some time later. And now you have to add an I there in order for things to work. Now imagine if you had created a system, an entire website with MySQL only. It means when things change, whoever gets or downloads your code must go through everything and try to fix every reference to session or MySQL in that case and change it to MySQLi. And then even the syntax has changed because with MySQL, we used to have the connection last, I think, now we have it first because uh, that's my SQL. If I say my SQL connect like so, the parameters you add in here, the order actually changed when we changed to my SQLi. Okay, so now it creates a big problem to upgrade your system when things change. Now, if you create a session class instead, whether a system is or a a thing is deprecated here, all you have to do is go to the session class and change it from there, then it changes everything in the website because everything in the website is referencing the session class. So this is why it is better to move all the hard work to classes. Okay, that way just changing a single class will change the operation of the entire website. All right, hopefully I've sold you on that idea, but uh, let's, um, let me uh, put comment here so that uh, this doesn't interfere with our work. So let's create a class here, right? That's not what I wanted. I wanted it to show me some goodies. Okay, like that. Mm -hmm. So the class name here is, uh, we just say, uh, work with session variables. So of course, we're going to call this one session, capital S, class session extends, it doesn't extend anything. So let's just remove the extension here. And this is the constructor, but let's remove the argument lest we get an error. But we'll leave the constructor there just for kicks. Okay, so what I want now is just create a few uh, public variables here, uh, methods, sorry. So just a public function. So the first one we're going to create is this one, set values by array, okay? Actually, maybe let's go in order. Let's start with flash. So flash, what flash is going to do uh, is to flash the whole session. Essentially just, uh, it's going to, to delete everything in the session. So all we have to do is say session, like so. Actually, no, we're going to say session uh, destroy, like so. Okay. Session destroy. But it's very possible that uh, this can be called without having the session had been active. If the session was active or not, we would not know. So let's come back here and see if I go back to init and then I remove session start here. 
and then what I want to do is uh, check if session start was done here. So I'm just going to say uh, echo. Actually, I don't need to do this. I already know what will happen here. So what we can do instead, let me copy this session start here just in case because we want the session class to be standalone so you can get it from one project and take it to another so what we will do is here i'm just going to say create a function here this is going to be a private one so private function which you're going to say start session okay like so so here we will put session start. Now we can't just put session start there because it will cause an error if somebody already started it. So what we will do is we're going to put an if statement and say, if not is set. So if session is not set, and then we're going to do session. Oops, sorry. If is not set, oh yeah, I was correct there. If not is set session, then session start simple as that okay so we can just call session start right here before we do anything so i'm just going to destroy the session just after starting it so this won't cause an error even though session start was in code actually here i need to change this i can't do this start session oh yes i can but what i need to do is do this like so this session start so this will be required for all of these functions that we create here okay so we are done with session session uh, flash now we go to uh, set a value so set so this one is a public function of course set like so and then set now is going to be, uh, there's two types, set and then set by array. So what I want to do here is put a value like so. And then here I'm going to say value, uh, but wait a minute. Usually we're going to have a key and value pair like so. So I'll put the value on empty string like so, just in case. So there will be two ways to set a value. Now we don't want to be able to specify which way. We just, it just needs to figure this out by itself. So I'm going to say if, if is string. Now, if it's a string, if key is a string, then it means it must set a value for key. It's expecting a key and a value here. So somebody who wants to set a value in our session is just going to say set and then they put their key there, and then they put a comma and put their value like so. But we want to also be able to just put an array like so, which has key value pairs, and then we'll be able to set things like that. So let's do that real quick. So we're going to say, if this is a string, then let's do the normal thing. So we're going to say uh, session here, so say session, and then here I will put key like that and say is equal to, and then I will get the value like so. But else if like that, let's put an if just to be sure is array. If key is an array, then let's loop through it. So I'm just going to say for each loop like so. So for each, key like that and unfortunately we have taken this key and value uh, let me change this one to something like my key just so there's a difference and my key here as well okay so my key key value like that so what we will do is we're going to copy this Actually, this is value over here. Uh, let me put my over there as well, just to distinguish the two. Okay, okay, that's okay. Then I can do this now. 
So I'm just going to say session uh, key, which is this one, not the one here. So just key and then value, which is here, not that my value there. Okay, so like this, we can have, we can have it both ways. Okay, so great. And then let's go to another one now. So obviously it's important to put uh, comments in these things, otherwise you end up getting lost the next time you come back. So you can just copy this and add some valid comments here. Start the session if not started. So you can put all the comments that you want here. So let's move on to the next one. Now get is just going to return a value, okay? So here we'll say uh, we have session destroy, did we? Flash, okay. Uh, destroy is the same as flash. Uh, remove. So we're remaining with uh, get and remove. So let's come down here and uh, do that. So public function, what have I done? Get like so. Okay, so we are getting here. Now, one thing I forgot is to put the session start. So very important on all the functions, put it there like so. Start the session. Thing, same thing here, start the session. And then if I want to get, now for me to get, I need to have a key. So I'll say key like so. And then I'm just going to say return uh, session. And then let's look for that particular key, like so. Now it's very possible that this key will not exist. So this is the goodie of this part. We can just put an if statement. If is set that, then return it like this. Otherwise we return, uh, we return a no. Sometimes you don't want to return false because false could actually be a value of one of these items in the session. So maybe a no is better because it's just nothing. So return no is just the same as no return whatsoever. So we might as well just remove that because even without that, it's, it will still return a no. So get we have and we have remove. There we go. So let's create one more with remove. So I'm just going to copy this. Actually, I'll copy all of this. In fact, copy all of this like so. Paste and just change the name. So remove with that key, session start. If is set, then instead of returning this, we're just going to say uh, unset. Uh, this key, right? Now, you could want to return true just so you know if it actually happened or you can tell it to return false if nothing happened. So return false here. That way you get a boolean telling you whether it happened or not. So here we return this or we return a no. Okay, so uh, yeah, looking great, looking great. So let me zoom in a little bit here, just in case you can't see the code properly for some reason, you can uh, go through it like this. Okay, so great. Now we have everything we need ready to go.